Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In the last session, we have discussed about cubital fossa. So I thought we will discuss about another fossa of body that is a fossa of lower limb that is popliteal fossa. So before learning popliteal fossa, we have to know about hamstring muscles because these muscles form some of the boundaries of the popliteal fossa. So what do you mean by hamstring muscles? Where are they located? The hamstring muscles are present at the back of the thigh, that is, which is these, are, these are a group of muscles present between the hip and the knee. And the knee hamstring cane, hamstring, the, the tendons of these muscles are used to hang hams like a string, that's why the name hamstring cane. Now, which are muscles constitute the hamstring muscles? So these muscles are long head of biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semi-membranosus, ischial part of adductor magnus. So in order to call a muscle as hamstring, it has to fulfill four criteria. What are the, what are the four criteria in order to call a muscle as hamstring? The first one is origin, then insertion, the nerve supply and action. The origin should be from ischial tuberosity. The insertion should be to either to tibia or to fibula. The nerve supply should be by tibial part of sciatic nerve. And the action should be extensor of hip joint and flexor of knee joint. So only if a muscle fulfills all these four criteria, they can be called as hamstring muscle. So let's see if all these four muscles fulfill that criteria. You can see sacrum, this is hip bone, this is the ilium, ischial tuberosity, you can see the femur. Okay, so the first muscle is long head of biceps femoris. You can see it is taking origin from the ischial tuberosity. So this is an expanded view of the ischial tuberosity. Here, with the transverse ridge, it is divided into a quadrilateral area above and a triangular area below. The long head of biceps femoris is taking origin from the medial aspect or uh, supramedial aspect of the quadrilateral area of ischial tuberosity. Some books say it is lower and medial aspect because it is in a slightly slanted position. So you can, you can say as lower and medial aspect or some books say it is supramedial aspect of the quadrilateral area of the ischial tuberosity. So you can see here, and it gets inserted into the head of fibula. So the long head of biceps femoris fulfills the first criteria. The second criteria also because it is getting inserted into the head of fibula, it is supplied by the tibial part of sciatic nerve. So third criteria is also fulfilled. Fourth, it is an extensor of hip joint and a flexor of knee joint. So all the four, four criteria are fulfilled. So long head of biceps femoris is a hamstring muscle. What about the semitendinosus? The semitendinosus muscle, you can see here, it is also taking origin from the uh, quadrilateral area, that is the supramedial aspect of the quadrilateral area, along with the long head of biceps femoris. It is getting inserted into the medial surface of the shaft of tibia. The semitendinosus means it has got a long tendon, you can see a long tendon. That is getting inserted into the medial surface of the shaft of tibia. So the first criteria is fulfilled, that is from the ischial tuberosity. Second, that is to the tibia, that is also fulfilled. Third and fourth also fulfilled because it is supplied by the tibial part of sciatic nerve and it is an extension of hip joint and flexor of knee joint. All the four criteria are fulfilled. Next is semimembranosus. Semimembranosus is the term membrane means at the at the region of insertion it um, forms many slips. After the insertion, it forms some extension into many slips, like membrane-like slips. That's why it's known as semimembranosus. Now, let's see what is the origin of the semimembranosus. You can see here, it is getting originated from the supralateral aspect of the quadrilateral area of the ischial tuberosity. Ischial tuberosity itself. Then, what is inserted? It is getting inserted at the uh, back of the medial condyle of tibia and at the level of insertion you can see uh, it splits into many extensions that is membranous loops, 
uh, that forms the oblique obliteral ligament of knee joint, uh, few slips to the uh, tibia itself, and then fascia covering the popliteus muscle. So that is all about the semi-membranosus. So it fulfills the second criteria since it is getting inserted into the tibia. Third and fourth also fulfilled because it is supplied by tibial part of sciatic nerve. Its action is extensor of hip joint and flexor of knee joint. What about ischial part of adductor magnus? Ischial part is uh, taking origin from the infralateral aspect of the ischial tuberosity. So the first criteria is fulfilled. Secondly, it is getting inserted into the adductor tubercle of femur. Uh, you can just see a few part of adductor magnus here. And it is getting inserted into the adductor tubercle of femur. We are having a doubt whether it is fulfilling the criteria because it is inserted into the adductor tubercle of femur. I will explain that. So, what about the third and fourth criteria? That is, it is uh, supplied by the tibial part of sciatic nerve and it is an extensor of hip joint and flexor of knee joint. So, let's see why ischial part of adductor magnus is coming under hamstring muscles. Before that, let me tell you, there are two sets of hamstring muscles that is true hamstring and modified hamstring. What makes it true and what makes it a modified hamstring? And which one muscles are true and which one are modified? Semi tendinosus and semi membranosus are true hamstring muscles because all the four criteria are fulfilled as such. Whereas the long head of biceps femoris and the ischial part of adductor magnus are modified hamstrings because we will discuss about the long head of biceps femoris. You have seen its origin is from the ischial tuberosity itself. But initially its primitive origin was from sacrum and ilium. And later that origin shifted to the ischial tuberosity. So the morphological remnant now present is known as sacrotuberous ligament. Okay. So the initial origin was from sacrum and ilium but now its uh, origin is from the ischial tuberosity that's why it is a modified hamstring. What about the ischial part of adductor magnus? You have seen the insertion is to the adductor tubercle of femur but its in initial insertion was to the medial condyle of tibia and later subsequently it shifted to the adductor tubercle of femur that leaving behind a remnant that is a divorced insertion you can say it was a primitive divorced insertion that remnant is known as tibial collateral ligament the long head of biceps femoris was primitively originating from some other area but now it is originating from ischial fibrosis that's why it is a modified hamstring ischial part of adductor magnus was primitively inserted into the tibia that is medial condyle but now it is getting inserted into the adductor tubercle of femur so that is also a modified hamstring so you have learned there are two uh, hamstrings which are true hamstrings and two which are modified hamstrings what about short head of biceps femoris we can see the short head of biceps femoris take origin from the lateral limb of linea aspera of femur so the first criteria is not fulfilled it is getting inserted along with the long head to the head of fibula. That is fulfilled. It is supplied by common perineal part of sciatic nerve. So that is also not fulfilled. And the fourth action is it is just a flexor of knee joint. It is not extensor of hip joint, just a flexor of uh, knee joint. Therefore, the fourth criteria is also not fulfilled. So short head of biceps femoris is not coming under the hamstring group. Similarly, the adductor part of adductor magnus is also not coming under the hamstring group. So these are the four muscles that are coming under the hamstring group. So are there any other actions for hamstring muscles? We have already discussed these are extensors of hip joint and flexors of knee joint. And uh, in a semi-flexed knee, the semi tendinosus and semi membranosus together act as medial rotators and whereas the biceps femoris act as uh, lateral rotators of tibia on femur and when you do toe touching the range of motion of the flexion of hip when, a, when the knee is extended is restricted so what are the applied aspects of hamstring muscles there is a condition known as pulled hamstrings it is a very painful condition pulled hamstring occurs usually in professional runners because running needs 
extension of hip joint and flexion of knee joint. It occurs when the attachment of the hamstrings or the ischial tuberosity is torn. That can lead to a painful condition that is known as pulled hamstrings. There is another term that is known as hamstringing the enemy. That means in ancient times the soldiers used to slash the back of thigh of horses of the opponent so that the horse and the rider falls down and if hamstring muscles are paralyzed the person tends to fall forward because the, uh, the chief extension of hip joint that is the uh, gluteus maximus cannot itself maintain the tone or cannot itself maintain the upright posture when the hamstrings are paralyzed. So in ancient times uh, this procedure was done by soldiers to, uh, to make the opponents fall down that is known as the hamstringing the enemy. And the term we can say that is semimembranosus bursitis the bursa is present between the tendon of the semimembranosus and the bone and, and if this bursa gets inflamed that can lead to semimembranosus bursitis. So these are the main points about the hamstring muscles. So we have discussed uh, what are the four muscles belonging to the hamstring group. We have discussed the four criteria. We have discussed the true and modified and we have seen the origin and insertion nerve supply action of each and every muscle. And we have also discussed about the applied aspects. It is usually asked as a viva question. Hope you all understood the topic. Next session will be about popliteal fossa. If you haven't subscribed this channel, please do subscribe. Please press the bell icon to get more notifications. Thank you.